I want you to know that through this power in us. Listen, uh, I got to have a bookend on this thing, so I'm praying, God, give me some good Holy Ghost on it. But from Pentecost till now, Jesus rose, and what happened was on Pentecost, he said, listen, stay here. I'm going to give you power to do. Now, you can fill in the blank, but power to do. Stay here. I'm going to give you a helper to do. The power to stop us. Power to be a good husband. Power to be a good wife. Power just to be a good father, a good brother. God said, I will give you power and authority to do what you ought to do. So if you're ever finding yourself struggling doing the common things of your life, you need to say, God, I need more of your power. God, I need more of your power. God, God, I want to tap into it. But check this out. What I want you to know from is that the power comes from God. I, I don't have a fancy title for it today, but, but I can't keep talking about power in us. And we don't realize that the power is from God. Power from God. I guess that was my title. That's what it would be. Power from God. I said the Holy Ghost is on the inside of me, but it is power from God. You have to know where the power comes from. It's not because you are so important. It's not because you are made perfect. It's not because you go to church every day. It's not even because you tall or you short, you pretty or you ugly. The reason that we have the power that I speak of is it's because God deems it so. God says, this is what I want to give you. And in doing that, that's what makes you powerful. It's not because you're a perfect Christian. It's not because you learned all the books of the Bible. All that stuff is nice. But the reason that we have it is because God deems it to be so. And when you realize that, you say, well, it's power from God. That means I can mess up every now and then in life and still have power in my life because the power comes from. That means I can have a hiccup or two. I can have a bump on the road. I, I, I can go through different trials of life and not beat myself down so much. Why? Because he didn't give it to me because I was perfect anyway. He didn't even give it to me because he liked me. He loved me so much that he says, you are my son and I give you power. Check this out. Let me get some Bible scripture on you. Uh, uh, go to Ephesians 1 and 18. Ephesians 1 and 18. I like that even on the streaming way. I still like to repeat my scripture because I want y'all to get y'all virtual Bibles. I know it's on the screen. But, but check this out. This is Paul talking to the church in Ephesus. This, uh, some people say it's almost a prayer. He says, so I'm going to put it in. I pray that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling. What are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? That your eyes be enlightened. Look, look, look. He says, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the working power of his mighty power? Which he worked. I know it's a lot to read, but check it out. Which he worked. That's capital H. So he says, this is the power that God worked in Christ when God raised Christ from the dead and seated him, they're talking about Christ, at his, talking about God, right hand in heavenly places. Let me break that down for you. I know that was a lot of scripture. Paul, 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 is, Paul right now is shaking with enthusiasm. Paul is so excited about trying to tell the church that it's graduation time. No longer are you going to stay on this level. No longer are you going to be mundane and the same. No longer are you going to make sacrifices the old way. He was saying, listen, listen, I've got some good news for you. And all I do is that I pray that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened. He, 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 he used, Paul, 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 Paul is wonderful with his literature because he says this, he says, he says, the eyes of your understanding be enlightened. He didn't say that your mind would be enlightened. He didn't say, I pray that you have so much knowledge of Christ. He says, I pray that your eyes, I pray that you have a 
feeling of enlightenment. Paul said it was not so much that you understand everything that's going on. It's so much that you feel what is going on. I need your head to catch up because this is really a heart thing. Comment that. Comment that. Comment. Somebody say it's a heart thing. It's a heart thing. It is a heart thing. Thing. Uh, it's a hard thing to be in the glory of God. It's a hard thing. It's not so much about understanding and reading the whole Bible. It's can you embrace it and accept it? Can you receive God's love? Do you understand this on the inside of you? It is unexplainable. Therefore, you cannot get enough degrees that will ever tell you the glory, majesty. He said, I pray that your understanding is enlightened. Everything is not dependent on my keen intellect, but the tender heart. Your heart is what opens up the mind. Your heart is what says, God, you love the wretch like me, therefore I receive your forgiveness. It is your heart that Christ first deals with to get to your brain, to get to your mouth, to get to what you say, to get to what you love. So Paul was saying, listen, I pray that you feel this thing. I pray that you open up your understanding so that you can actually receive the revelation I have for you. Because when he had, when he was in verse 1, he, he said, check that. He, he said, Christ that was raised from the dead. From the dead, y'all. He said, the power of Christ that, that, that he raised him from the dead. In verse 20 he said, then he put him in heaven. He, he, he took him from the dead down below. Is this view, can, can this view get my finger? I want to make sure everybody know. I'm pointing that, that, that he raised him from the dead and put him in heaven. Do, do you see the 180? You see the difference? You see, you see the complete turnaround that, that, that he said, God is so powerful that he can take a dead thing and not just bring it to life, but put it in abundance. God said that I have the ability to take whatever issue that you thought was non-existent, the issue that you thought there was no hope on, the problem in your life that was beyond dead. And he says, God has so much power. He takes the dead things and not just bring them to life, but he put them in a better place. God can take your dead issue, your problem in your life, and not just make it better, but put it in a better place than it ever was. Somebody say, glory to God. Glory to God. He said, I took the dead thing and put him right next to me in heaven. The one in the effect. That's how come he can take a sinner from somebody that was clubbing and doing crazy stuff all weekend long and take them to a place where now they have power from God. Not because you're so special, not because you're so perfect, but because the power is from God. That's a, look, get, get back in this Bible. Get back in this Bible. So y'all see what Paul, Paul is setting up? So he says, listen, I want you to wake up. And not just do I want you to wake up. I want you to understand the power that God has over dead things. And God can do opposite things. Opposite things. Opposite things. Maybe that should have been my, the opposite things. I, I opposite thing means if it was broke, now it's going to work. An opposite power says if I thought it wasn't ever going to come back to life, it's living now. An opposite power says if I was fired, then there's going to be a new job. An opposite power says if I was just naked, now I'm going to have more than enough. An opposite type of power, God says, listen, if I was a wretch and I couldn't handle it all on my own, now I can do exceedingly abundantly above all that I ask or think. When God gives you an opposite type of power, he'll make you a better mother than you ever was. He'll make you a better husband than you ever was. Whatever thing that you're struggling with in your life, you got to realize God has given me the opposite type of power. That if I was dead, now it's living. If it was a problem, now it's easy. If it was a struggle, now I'm blowing it out the gate. God has given me opposite type of power. Go, go, all right, all right, all right. Go, go, go back to Ephesians, Ephesians 1 and 21. We got to close out this thing. Listen. So, so, so after he paints the 180, he tells them, but listen, far above all principality and power and might and dominion, and every name that is in the name, not only. 
only in this age, but in every age to come. That God has put all things under Christ's feet. God gave Christ to be the head over all things to the church. That's about to the church. We did a whole series talking about we are the church. What to the church? What the doors of this building are closed, but the church is open. Why? Because we are the church. He says, God has taken all things. So he says, above all this principality, above all the might, all the dominion, above all these names that ever will come and ever will be, above all these things, God has given all authority and all power to Jesus Christ and put them under Jesus Christ's feet so that he can be head of the church, head of our lives, head of who we are. And then verse 23 is where I got to end that. He says, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. I, 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 I had to go to my, 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 my commentary when I was working on that. He was, he was saying, so let's put it all together. He says, there's so much amazing power. Power to raise Jesus from the dead. Power to put him above where he was. He didn't just raise him to life. After he raised him to life, then he put him above where he was. So God has power not just to bring it back to life, but put it above and put it better. And then he says, far above all that domain, all that power. Far above every name that has ever been mentioned. Far above all these things. Far above all this. Do you understand, first of all, the power of God? You're like, yeah, man, I'm starting to get it, Paul. He said, do you understand the power of God? Then he walks him through. Do you understand the power in God? That Jesus has everything under his feet. Uh, 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 I'm, a, I'm a school geek. I knew, I knew what this formula was, but I had to look up the name of it. Uh, all my graduates, come on, y'all better nail this with me. It's called the transitive property in, in your algebra class, in your math class. The transitive property. Uh, 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 what that is, is that, 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 that's the one that we used to see. If A is equal to B and B is equal to C, then A must also be equal to C. I know, I know, y'all been out of school for a minute, y'all laughing at me. If Bernard is equal to Mark and Mark is equal to Jarrell, well then it's safe to say I can transition or I can move these things around and now I can say the first thing I started with, Bernard, is also equal to Jarrell. Did, did I mess you up first? What about this? Uh, 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 uh. If all power is in God, and God gave all the power under the feet of Jesus. And now we say Jesus lives on the inside of us. Then you can also say that the power of God is equal to the power that is inside of me. That's what Paul was walking through. He said, do you know the power of God? He brings things back from the dead. If you knew the power of God, he'll make you right when you want to be wrong. If you knew the power of God, then he said, then he said, but Jesus himself, oh, every name that ever will come, every name that has ever been, every situation in your life that will ever wake up and rise up, every problem that you're ever going to face or have faced in your past, every roadblock, every dead end, every trying place, every jail in your life, Jesus has so much power. He has resurrection power. Uh, 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 later on in, 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 in Philippians, do that, do, do, do that one for me real quick. Do that one for me. Philippians 3 and 10, I want the scripture to jump off of the page. Philippians says, that I may know him. This is Paul talking again to the church of uh, uh, Philippi. He, he said, that I may know him. I wish that I could know God in the power of his resurrection and in the fellowship of his suffering. Come back to me. Uh, uh, what, what it was saying is resurrection power is so amazing. See, we don't celebrate the resurrection just because of what he did. We celebrate the power behind how it happened. And once you understand the power behind how it happened, then you can realize the power that God 
God has given us, the power of your tongue. Elder Norman said it on the video list today. He said, life and death are in the power of the tongue. And those that love it shall eat the fruit of them. The fruit there is. You can eat on the luxuries of your life being better if you understand the authority that you have, the, the dominion that you have, the ability that you have, the, the thing. If God can do it, then, then you have a touch of that. And if you ever read it in this Bible and you see Jesus doing it, then, then you got a touch of that. That's why when Jesus walked out on the water, all he said was, well, you want to do it, do it too. Jesus told him, he said, if you have faith of a mustard seed, you can, you can talk to a mountain a mountain. Why? He said, I've given you something special. Now, now look, now look, now look. I, the, the, this jumped in my spirit, and, and I don't know, I don't know how we're gonna work it. Church, y'all just gonna go with me. It's the last Sunday, so you call it the blowout sale. I gotta give y'all everything I have for this month. But but check this out, check this out. Um, um, I'm power, power of God. Right? God, the, the power of God in us, God. That, 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 that the power is from God. Yesterday I'm, I'm gardening. Gar gardening, gar garden, gardening, gardening. <laughs> there we go. Yesterday, that's what I'm doing. I took a good shower and my nails feel a little dirty. I mean, it's hard, dude. Uh, check this out. I, I don't have a green thumb. I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm not good at this. So I don't do it often. I like to just throw mulch down and let it sit. My wife got all these plants and everything, so we're digging. And, and I'm digging holes and I'm putting down plants and everything. And something amazing happened to me. I know, I know. Y'all y'all know all this stuff, but Holy Ghost talk to me in unique moments. And I'm on my knees, I'm doing it. And, and I start putting down different plants in different areas. Arranging them by how they looked. Arranging them on how cute they were. But I finally found one of them. My wife said, said, said how are you doing it? Did you read the instructions? I said, I said the instructions. What, what, what comes to find out, if, if you guys plant, you probably know, on, on each and every plant, it has these instructions that talk about the best temperature, the best sunlight, the best way to plant it, the way to water it. It talks about the environment needed for that plant to thrive. And, and, and as I was reading it, Holy Ghost said, isn't that amazing that somebody wiser than me Somebody with more knowledge than me. Somebody that has a history, not just with the plant, but from when the plant was a seed, Jarrell. Somebody said, when that plant was a seed, I, 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 I know exactly the type of life that this plant needs in order for this plant to thrive. I, I know the exact type of soil. I, I, I know right there was listed. It says, for this plant to thrive in the right environment, I need somebody to give it a little bit of light. I, I need this much of water. It needs to be in this type of temperature just for this plant to thrive. But the amazing thing was, even, even though I had a different plant I wanted to put next to it, the same plant couldn't be planted next to it. Why? Because it needed something different. That beyond me, beyond my knowledge, beyond the way I want it to look like and the way I feel like it, y'all already get it. Some of us like to be, I want to thrive like you thrive. I want to ball like you ball. I wish I had your family. I, I wish I had your husband. I wish I had your wife and your kids. But what if I told you that if you were to be planted in the same environment as me, you would not thrive. Therefore, God that, that knew you, what did he tell you? He said, before I formed you in your mama's belly, I knew who you were. He said, I have taken you and I have a specific place for you. I got a special ground just for you. I, 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 I got a unique environment. Check this out. It's not done. Uh, uh, as, as I'm there, I was noticing, I told you I got dirty. Why? Because in order for me to get the right plant to the right environment, it took a lot of digging up. It, it took a lot of mess everywhere. I was getting dirt all over. I had to break up the good ground and put new type of soil. God is taking you to a place where he's trying to allow you to thrive with the power that is on the inside of you. And on your way there, God is going to have to stir some things up. On your way there, God. 
Hold it. So, so. Boom, tear it. Dirt everywhere. Plan is planted. But this is the last thing I found out in the power series. Uh, uh, uh. Check this out. Y'all better go home with this one. The way the plants grow is not according to my camera. Check this out. The, the, the way that the plants grow is not dictated to the calendar. Just because it says June 1st doesn't mean that is the best time for that plant to bloom. What dictates the growth of a plant is the season. What dictates the growth of a plant is the season. So sometimes in my life, I'm so frustrated that God has not allowed me to bloom because I'm looking at my calendar. I'm saying, God, it's my birthday. I would have thought I was better by now. God, it's the holiday. I would have thought I was over this issue by now. But God says it's not according to your calendar. But I have put you in the right place.
depending on the flower, depending on the plant. Some of them I can just throw them in. Others require much dirt, much water, little fertilizer, extra work. And rather be upset, why does this one need so much? Said because somebody that knows the type of seed that is, they know what's going to be the right environment for that plant to thrive. People of God, I pray to God, the power in us was given to us because it's straight from God. But it's given to us that we may take advantage of the opportunity that God has put us in. My life is this way because my testimony needs to be this way. My life is this way because my experience is the one I need. Let me see that. Come on, I'm about to pray this out. Uh -huh. that, that when you realize that somebody that's wiser than you, smarter than you, it's truly in control. When you take your hands off the wheel and say, you know what? God, I'm going to trust in you. And as you trust in him, trust that he has resurrection power. All names are under his feet. And he says, this same power is all in all. Say, all the believers, this is the power of man. So while you're struggling, while you're battling depression and thoughts, anxiety, overwhelming feelings, stop and say, you know what, maybe I'm not trying to do this in my power. God, I'm going to tap into yours. Because you're finding the perfect place for me to move. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we, we thank you right now. God, we give you honor. We give you authority. God, we call on your power right now. God, we call on your power right now. God, we call on your power. Hallelujah. God, I'm praying for somebody that's struggling right now. Oh, shit. Oh, God, I ask that El Shiru. Eat it in the God, God, I'm praying for somebody that's struggling right now. God, that calendar been kicking their butt. God, that calendar been telling them they should be over some things that still bother them. God, that calendar been telling them that they must be less than because they haven't achieved A, B, and C. God, that calendar been whooping that tail. God, you're not the God of the calendar. You're the God of our season. So God, this may be a planting season, but God, take us into our blooming season. God, take us into our thriving season. God, take me into a season where, 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 where my leaflets change color. God, take me into a season where I sprout more than I ever sprouted before. God, take me into a season of greener pastures. God, give us renewed strength. For they that wait upon the Lord shall be renewed. God, we've been waiting on you. We pray your spirit. We pray to be so in Jesus' name. Somebody say in Jesus' name. Somebody say in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Believer, I pray that you pray with me. I want to know if, 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 if there's anybody. Check this out. I, I, I've been missing this. There's people right now on the line. There's people. There, 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 there's people, there's elders, ministers. Look, if you have prayer, pray for me. That's just your prayer. We don't need all your deep. Pray for me. Pray for my family. If you type that, you put that in the comment. I guarantee you, I got elders. They're going to call out your name. Call out your families. They're going to be praying for you. I'm praying for my aunt who went in for a surgery and should have been home and still at the hospital. I'm praying for her. But I pray for her as I join with you. Pray for your family. It's not just about COVID. It's about what our families need. I'm praying for you as a husband, as a mother, as a wife, as a daughter. Jesus, my name. God, we serve your gift. God, we say the same power that's in you. Being us, that we speak life. 
I speak a 180 blessing, God. I speak an opposite blessing. If she was in the hospital, send her home. If she was depressed, make her better. If he thought he couldn't do it, God, let him know that he can. God, I'm speaking opposite over their life. Turn around. That was a sinner, make them saved. That was saved, make them even better. That was just making it. Allow the overrun with your blessings. Jesus' name, amen. Somebody say amen. Come on, church, can we clap? Clap your hands right there. I, I pray y'all follow with it all, but man, that thing blessed me. I'm sweeping up 8.30 at night, and I say, God, you're amazing. God, you're amazing. God, you're amazing. God, you're amazing. Watch this one. One other thing that I've been noticing. People have really been taking authority of their seeds. I've been seeing it more and more on our lives and as we stream People said when they sow, they're saying, I'm putting my seed in the ground. The, the same plants I had. <clears throat> Let me get that. Let me. The same plants that I had, they can only grow so much while they remain in their container. The, the, the same plants I had, the bush I bought years ago, it's bigger now, but, but it can only grow so much when it was in its plastic container, when it was in its shield, when it was in its place. It wasn't until we took it out and planted it in the ground. It wasn't until we took it out and put it somewhere else that it started to grow and produce and yield so much more. When it comes to our giving, I don't want you to lose that. Not that you're a bad person, but we give because in God's hand, it's pressed out, shaken together. Running over shall men give unto the bosom. Sometimes we're saying, God, how come it isn't happening for me? Have you so? I want you to get your seed ready right now. I'm asking you that you sow a gift. We're closing out the month of June. Coming out of June. Coming out of whatever this season was. And July is going to be something different. July is going to bring something different. Different time, different season. Finish out your June strong. Pay your tithe, your offering, your seed, your pledge. Put it in the ground. I, I'm a witness. Some of the close people in my circle, y'all, y'all saw just the other day. Somebody said, "What's your cash app on Facebook?" Just, just with people, just out of my wow. Sure, here. Shall me and just give it to your bosom? Why? I don't know. But it's not because I'm great. Because the power of God. I'm a giver, I'm a sower. My life has been blessed. My life is blessed. So as you're getting your seat ready, you see down the screen, you text to give. I see over 100 people right there. Text to give 77977. You give by way of Cash App. H O P P Church. Give that way. You can always send something down to the church. 16520 right here. 16520 Wyoming. Detroit, Michigan, 48221. You put it in the mail, do it through your bank. People have been online, however you've been doing it. House of prayer. You have been a blessing to this ministry. We have not lacked, and I believe it's through the power of God working in your life. Can you give that? Come on, I want to get you prepared. I want to speak the blessings over your life. <clears throat> I know we, we do this often, but we do it because we speak the blessing. So if the same power of God is in me, I speak this over my life. So as I give today, I'm believing God for it. New souls in the kingdom. Jobs and better jobs. Raises and bonuses. Benefit sales and commissions. 
settlements, estates, and inheritance, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, better yet, checks in my hand, gifts and surprises, finding money, bills paid off, debts demolished, royalties received, money made back, loans paid off. I shall live and not borrow. I shall prosper and be in good health. I shall give and be blessed. Somebody say hallelujah. 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 Jesus' name. Amen. Keep that beat going. This is what y'all supposed to walk around with y'all off. Hallelujah, House of Prayer, Grace family. I love you. God bless you.